The history of Edinburgh is full of violence and bloodshed. For centuries it played a critical role in Scotland's struggle for independence. The area around the old town of Edinburgh has been inhabited for thousands of years. The first settlement forming around the hill fort that would eventually become Edinburgh Castle. The, the old town area of Edinburgh is full of strange hauntings that lead many to believe that it's the most haunted area in all of Scotland. The Old Town of Edinburgh originally consisted of one main street and small alleyways and courtyards that led off the main road. This area is now known as the Royal Mile. At the top of the Royal Mile sits Edinburgh Castle, leading all the way down to the bottom where the Parliament Building resides. The alleyways in between became known as Closes and were named after memorable residents or the jobs and trades of residents living in the apartments off of the Close. Brody's Close is named after William Brody a well-respected member of society and deacon of the Edinburgh Incorporation of Rights and Masons. Brody was a master craftsman and was responsible for installing and repairing locks of banks, businesses, and many homes of the rich. In 1768, Brody used his position to copy the keys to a bank and successfully stole 800 pounds, which would be about 120,000 pounds by today's currency. He used this money to maintain a secret life of gambling and supporting two different mistresses and the five children he fathered between them. In 1786, he recruited a gang of thieves to go on a crime spree that lasted for two years, until the police were finally tipped off that Brody was the mastermind behind a failed armed raid. Brody managed to evade the police and escape to Amsterdam before being arrested and brought back to Edinburgh for trial, where he was found guilty. Before being hanged, Brody attempted to bribe the executioner to prevent himself from his imminent death. However, these bribes fell upon deaf ears, and William Brody's story came to an end. Or did it? Not long after, his ghost began appearing at his old workshop and family home. His ghost can be found walking along his clothes with a set of keys, sometimes accompanied by a fire-breathing dark horse that he brought with him from hell. Edinburgh Castle is the most visited paid tourist attraction in Scotland. It sits upon Castle Rock, a volcanic plug that formed after a volcano erupted over 340 million years ago. The castle as it stands today dates back to the 12th century and has been used as a royal residence of the Scottish monarchy and also as a military stronghold. Tensions between the Scottish and English monarchs were always fixed upon Edinburgh Castle. Whoever controlled the castle held rule over the city of Edinburgh and therefore all of Scotland. In its long history, the castle has been involved in 26 sieges and in conflicts ranging from the wars of Scottish independence in the 14th century to the Jacobite Rising of 1745. Centuries of endless violence have left many restless spirits that haunt the castle grounds. Tourists and staff encounter paranormal activity on a weekly and sometimes daily basis. Known ghosts include American and French prisoners, a piper, Janet Douglas, who was supposedly a witch, <laughs> a headless drummer, and even ghost dogs. Along with unexplainable drops in temperature, mysterious orbs, disembodied voices, the sound of drums, and an unseen entity that tugs at visitors' clothes and hair. The hauntings of Edinburgh Castle attracted a team of researchers to investigate in 2001. They brought in 200 participants who had no prior knowledge of the hauntings. They allowed the participants to roam the castle grounds, and more than half reported that they encountered some form of paranormal activity during their time exploring the castle. The Edinburgh Vaults are a series of chambers that were built into the 19 arches of the South Bridge in 1788. The chambers were used by taverns, cobblers, and other merchants for storage. However, they quickly deteriorated due to dampness caused by poor waterproofing of the arches. This combined with poor air quality in the vaults led to them being abandoned, left to the poorest citizens to take shelter in. Crime ran rampant, with prostitution, robbery, and murder all becoming a normality in the underground life of the vaults. Each of the vaults have their own separate entrance and hauntings. The Nitty Street vaults are haunted by a poltergeist that controls one of the rooms. New light bulbs burst as soon as they're replaced, and women have been attacked when they enter the room. People often faint if they stay too long. The sounds of whispering, children crying, heavy footsteps, shuffling noises, and whimpering can be heard coming from inside the vaults. Others have reported being pushed and scratched by invisible forces while inside. The Blair Street vaults are another section of the vaults that are well known for being haunted by multiple ghosts. Groaning noises and children crying are frequently heard coming from this chamber. These vaults are home to a very gentle spirit. 
and one sinister spirit. An apparition of a kind-looking old man appears in one of the rooms and is usually seen making shoes, earning him the name The Cobbler. The sinister spirit has been dubbed Mr. Boots. He gets angry when people enter his room with lights. Mr. Boots can be very violent towards women and is known to push and check them if they enter his room. His presence can be felt in every room of the Blair Street vaults, except for the Cobbler's room. Greyfriars Kirkyard is the graveyard surrounding the Greyfriars Kirk, a church at the southern edge of Old Town. Burials have been taking place in the graveyard since the late 16th century. It is home to two famous hauntings, the Greyfriars Bobby and the Mackenzie Poltergeist. Greyfriars Bobby was a Skye Terrier that spent 14 years guarding the grave of his owner, John Gray, until Bobby died and was buried inside of the gate of the Kirkyard. The story has been documented in countless books and movies, including the Disney movie title, The Greyfriars Bobby. After his death, sightings of Greyfriars Bobby continued, and it is thought that he remains guarding the grave of his owner, waiting to be reunited with his master. The Mackenzie Poltergeist is the terrible spirit of bloody Sir George Mackenzie. In 1677, Mackenzie became Lord Advocate, the chief legal officer of the Scottish government and crown in both civil and criminal matters. He was the minister responsible for enforcing Charles II's persecution policy against the Presbyterian Covenanters. After the Battle of Bothwell Bridge, Mackenzie imprisoned 1,200 Covenanters in a field in Greyfriars Kirkyard. Hundreds died due to mistreatment, and he had hundreds executed. This earned him the nickname of Bloody Mackenzie. During his time serving the crown, he was responsible for the deaths of up to 18,000 opponents of King Charles II. Sir Mackenzie died on May 8, 1691, and was buried in Greyfriars Kirkyard, where he rested peacefully. That is until a homeless man broke into Mackenzie's mausoleum, seeking shelter from the cold Scottish night. While inside, the homeless man decided to break open the coffin to see what valuables he could find. Instead, he accidentally released the spirit of Mackenzie back onto the world. Since 1999, over 500 visitors to the Kirkyard have reported being hit scratched or shoved when passing his black mausoleum. Some are shoved so hard that they are knocked to the ground. There have been over 170 reports of people fainting in the graveyard. Many people leave with bloody noses, bruises, and unexplainable marks on their body. If you're feeling brave and want to increase your chances of encountering the Mackenzie Poltergeist, then be sure to recite this when passing his mausoleum. Bloody Mackenzie, come out if you dare. Life to snack and draw the bar. But don't be surprised if you get more than what you bargained for. The city of Edinburgh is a place of amazing history and even greater paranormal presence. We have only scratched the surface and invite you to check out the old town of Edinburgh for yourselves. Who knows, you may even leave with a few stories of your own. Thanks strangers for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. We upload every Wednesday night, and please check the description below for sources, photo and video credits, and links to extra reading you may want to check on the Old Town of Edinburgh. And remember, stay strange. <laughs>